So my presentation will be uh, as follows. Firstly, I'll talk about placement, then about academics, later internships, and then career development and student festivals. Moving on to placements. We'll be introducing placements for the first time. We'll be introducing placements for the first time. Placements uh, is a policy which will provide a chance for the students who are yet to be placed after phase two of placements to do an internship at few companies. Later on, these internships can be converted into a full-time offer based on the candidate. We'll be introducing green core company policy. In this, according to this policy, students can apply for one of the core company even after being offered an opportunity in a non-green core company, thus enhancing the core placements in the issue. In order to reduce the stress on students, we have, we have a couple of changes in the placement process. Firstly, we will be extending the phase 1 of placements from 10 days to 15 days. This, thus, extending the phase 1 of placements will help us uh, adding gaps in between days so that students can be better prepared for the next set of companies. We are also revising the timeline of uh, placements. We will be having a placement GPM in the current semester so that students can start preparing for placements or, uh, from summer itself. Uh, in order to have a student friendly placement portal, we have a couple of changes. Firstly, we will be incorporating an inbox tab. Uh, I will explain the need of the inbox tab. Right now, uh, all the mails regarding the company test or the test schedule or the interview shortlist is being sent through the emails. And there is a lot of delay in passage of this information. In order to get them onto a single note, we will have an inbox tab in the portal itself or where students can find all this information. We will also be having a preparation tab which will include the uh, documented and uh, well systemized placement material or where students can uh, check at any point of time during the placement. We will also add filters to the placement portal uh, through which they can uh, filter the companies based on package and the profile, thus reducing the amount of time spent on the choosing of companies. Next, uh, uh, we will be facilitating companies with various uh, taxi partners and uh, hotel deals. These, these uh, deals can, can be used for uh, their accommodation and transportation, thus giving a pleasant experience to them. Uh, we will be having a, a more detailed employment registration form, which will include the location of the job, the pay split up and also the test description, where it will uh, explain what, kind, what the company is actually expecting from the student in the test. And also the basic amenities like uh, photocopying machine, Wi-Fi and refreshments will be made available during the placement season. We will be adding a new team to the placement team called Logistics, uh, logistics Department which, which will take care of all the logistics during the test and PPTs and interviews for the placements. Thus reducing the uh, delay in the conducting of these processes. Moving on to academics, uh, we, are introducing peer, we are introducing peer tutoring system. Uh, peer tutoring system is a uh, uh, system where we will be having second years and third years as tutors for the current first years. Uh, and, and then we will have student service page. Student service page will act as a single source of uh, information for all the academic related doubts. Uh, over here, uh, we will be having FAQs which will be published by academic department. Uh, these will be the requests combined. These will be combined requests which they will be getting over the years. Uh, this student service page will also include academic key, course rank and book page. Basically, academic key is a uh, source of all the information like how, to, how do you convert from a B.Tech to dual degree, how a dual degree program uh, exchange happens. All this information will be at a single page. And course rank gives a detailed feedback about all the courses and uh, what all streams the course is useful for. Okay. Moving on to summer courses. Right now, summer courses are being offered by YAN and NPTN. Uh, right now these courses can be created, but the awareness of these courses is very less and many of the students don't know about these courses. In order to facilitate that, we will be having a summer semester included in the workflow over where students can register for these courses during summer and they can reduce the number of grades they are doing during, during the semester. Class committee meetings. Uh, CRs uh, will uh, compile a detailed description of course feedbacks and they will be presenting in the class committee meetings. In order to uh, encourage an immediate, and, uh, immediate change, we will be having three class committee meetings, one at the starting, one after mid sems and one during just before the end semester. So that we can incorporate any change in the evaluation pattern or the course uh, syllabus. Moving on to internships. Uh, right, now, right now internships happen throughout the semester, throughout the year. 
Uh, and they happen during the week also, when students have classes uh, in Berkeley. In order to avoid the academic hindrance with the internship procedure, we'll be introducing IT weekends. Or we'll be calling up six to seven companies on a single weekend, uh, and they can uh, conduct the interview process, thus reducing the load during the week. Then we'll be having a research intern system. Research intern system, uh, we'll be adding a new tab for research interns in the internship portal, or where we'll list all the contacts uh, of various universities, programs, and also the contacts which we get from IAR. So this will act as a single source for all the research intern systems. And uh, this will also include the funding procedures and the application procedure in detail. We'll be restructuring the internship team with current second years in order to increase the efficiency of the team. Internship preparation will be done in line with the placement preparation and we'll be conducting uh, institute-wide mock GDs and uh, mock tests. Moving on to career development. Right now, most of the students choose their career in their final or pre-final semester when they are, uh, when it is the crunch time to apply for companies or uh, apply for uh, higher studies. This is the decision that should be taken much earlier in their second year or third year. At least they should have a clear idea about all the avenues available to them. In order to enhance this, we will be having a uh, lecture series. Uh, this lecture series is, will be conducted by alumni and also third party organizations. Uh, I'll firstly talk about alumni. We'll be having alumni from various sectors like consult, analytics, finance, startups and also core. And these alumni will have varied experience in the particular field so that they can view the exact scope of the field. And then we'll be calling few third party organizations to view uh, funders regarding the uh, other higher study options like uh, grad schools, B schools, IIMs, uh, MS, MTech, MS and PhDs. And also we'll be having uh, sessions on some of the non-conventional career options like uh, IAS or other op uh, options like sound engineering and few other. Like there are many other avenues to be explored. And we'll be having an institute by technical writing club. This club helps the students in uh, providing guidance for guidance about how to write a technical report or a research paper or a publications to that fact. Moving on to uh, in student facilities. Uh, firstly, we'll be having a personalized student page or where they can mention all the activities that they have uh, done in the institute and these activities will be authorized by the uh, current board or the secretary. So thus this will get an authentication from the institute side and this profile page can be used for uh, various uh, applications like IIMs and uh, B schools. And next we will collect a set of uh, textbooks that are frequently requested by the students and we will buy e-copies of them and these e-copies will be uploaded in the cell life website. Uh, we are also providing a 24-hour student facility, especially during quizzes, in the first floor of board complex. So, uh, I would like to conclude by mentioning my credentials. Uh, I was a part of the placement team for the past couple of years, uh, and also I was technical FS secretary in my third year. With all the experience that I have in each team, I think I would be a, I would be the best candidate for academic center. Thank you. Uh, so, Sangeet, uh, the new academic uh, course framework was passed last year and it's, it's been in place for one year. So what is the feedback that you've gotten on it and what do you want to pursue given that you have one year's experience? Uh, the current uh, academic framework which has been passed recently is uh, pretty much, uh, most of the students feedback was pretty good about it. But the problem is uh, you can't get the exact feedback unless and, uh, some one batch passes out, uh, graduates with the current curriculum. Uh, we'll be having an uh, academic buddy program who will, who will be trained with the new curriculum, who will be having the entire idea of the new curriculum so that they can guide the uh, freshers in choosing the correct electives and uh, courses. This academic party program will be in coordination with SAR. Uh, and this uh, personalized Facebook page, mm -hmm. that was in either DJ's or uh, 2 C's manifesto, I don't remember which. So they were not able to get it in place. So do you know why they were not able to get it in place and uh, what do you plan to do differently? So one of the major problems was with, uh, they, it was not their top priority probably. And also, we'll be having this page on the institute, institute website. So when I spoke to uh, Dean of Students, his major concern was, uh, how do you authorize it? So when we uh, when we said that course will sit and sit in the uh, sit together and authorize the points like uh, whatever information they are giving under a particular video, then he was okay with authenticating. So this was one of the major problems that it, it happened last year. Uh, so the deadlines for distribution of answer scripts and uh, 
uploading of grades, these have not been followed very strictly. So, what do you plan to do about that? So, uh, one of the uh, policy which we are planning to implement is we will be uh, up uploading the average cutoff and average of the class in that particular quiz or the mid-sem in the Moodle. So, if we have a deadline uh, right now, uh, they have to upload the cutoff before the Moodle, before the deadline, right? So, that will be like a cross check on the professor also. So, uh, what kind of companies have you already spoken to? Anything of that sort? So, in questions, uh, the companies which I am majorly focusing are startups. Uh, these startups, if you take, uh, there will be companies which have packed due to various reasons at the last minute. This year we have examples of Ola, Swiggy Bank, like they have come for one of the profile and for the other profile they didn't come due to the slotting issues or some other issues. So, these companies will be contacted after phase uh, and we teach about the students who are left after phase 2 of placement. Uh, one major point why it will work out is we will be asking them for an internship rather than a full time offer. Internship is something which a company can afford uh, to give to a student. So we will be introducing an academic affairs council which will be mainly focusing on all the academic issues. So right now one of the major team that comes under AS is the placement team. So apart from the placement team we will also have this academic uh, council which will take care of all the academic related issues. And also we will be taking help of the standing committee of SAC. Uh, so are there any audience questions here? Start. You must be having placement team meeting before the placement session starts, right? So you guys know that one week before that cyclone is going to hit uh, on 1st of December 2015. What did you guys discuss about like what would be your alternative, what would be your backup? What was the discussion? Can I know? Yeah. So uh, initially we had a discussion around November 25th or something regarding the flood issues. Uh, one reason which we went with, went ahead with the placements was there was a report saying that we'll have a cyclone in the November first thing, but which never came. So we were uh, taking the, uh, we are we were hoping that uh, we'll be able to conduct the placements with a uh, stream like uh, in an efficient manner. But the strike, uh, cyclone was much more intense than the reports also. So that was the reason. Our backup was shifting placement by a couple of days initially. But uh, uh, once the cyclone has hit, we understood that even by shifting the placement by a couple of days, we won't be able to uh, reach out to all the companies. So that was the reason we shifted it to January. No. So I, I'll answer that question. Can I, can I ask? Uh, why did you put generators for the three floors of Badra on day one of placement? There was so much hectic on that day. You should have put at least three generators. Was it difficult to arrange generators? Because I have seen directors who was lit during the month of the cyclone time. Firstly, generators wasn't the major issue that we that was the problem. See, major problem was the transportation of company officials from airports to the placement. That is okay. On day one. Day one yeah, companies so, will be there. If I may, if I may. So essentially the issue with generators or anything, the matter is that you need someone to transport a generator from a place to that area. So that was difficult. And additionally, you also needed to get a lot of bureaucratic clearances. The team wasn't allowing generators at that point. And we had, we wanted to bring it in for the next couple of days, but then after a point, like by 5.30ish, the roads were out. So that was why we couldn't get generators this time. So I'm asking ki, if you had planned it before, so the generators the plan, could have been before this cell, right? Plan uh, that generators weren't needed. So I'll tell you what the contingency plans were. So uh, we had, uh, we brought in walkie talkies in case network towers went down. We had uh, room for HRs and Badra with EC and uh, Sarantini guesthouse all slightly overbooked. So that if HR actually had to stay back there. Uh, additionally, we had like three types of internet connections put up in Badra. So you could actually have really fast time if they needed. But the eventuality that we didn't prepare for was like total power outage. Because we thought the cyclone would come, maybe we would probably have a temporary power outage for a little bit. Because we didn't really know the severity of the cyclone. And uh, initially the cyclone was supposed to hit on 20th. 
So our calculations were made assuming that it will hit somewhere between 25 to 28 and after it will be 5. But when it actually hit, it hit the afternoon of first. So that was actually something that we couldn't really control. And the director's house is lit on a separate power line. So the gas zone, the hospital, all of them are separate. When we were talking to the director, he was saying we have three generators with us on day three. He was saying we have three generators and we can use it as as needed. He was telling us huh. when we were talking to him. So that's what I'm asking why it wasn't an option. We didn't get clearance from the deal for that. That's what. Do you have any more questions? Okay. There is a company who had given a shortlist of 20 students. Day, day one is the interview. Day before that, company reduced the shortlist. The shortlist should be reduced based the people, 20 people should be shortlist, reduced to 10, right? Now the new people should be added to the shortlist. How that company has added a new shortlist and why the placement team hasn't taken any action against that company that I want to know. So I'll tell you the company name Roland Berger. Okay? And it was a hectic situation for us. Like I was preparing for Roland Berger and at the day before that I got to know I made listed. So why didn't any action was taken against the company? And also how company came up with new students who were not selected before that and it came with new student list. The head told me the reason of waitlisting is that before they were going to come two panels, now they are only coming one panel. If they are reducing the size of panel, the 20 shortlist people should reduce to 10, right? Not new people should be added. So how placement people didn't do anything about it? So uh, the order of information is slightly wrong. So I was there at that point of time in the placement office. So what happened was after the releasing the 20 shortlist, they added 10 more students to the initial shortlist. So making it 30 overall. Then uh, they informed the issue, raised the issue that they will be getting only one panel. Uh, then we asked them to give a rough time of each interview. So according to that uh, timing, uh, they were they will be able to take only 15 interviews in the time span of the phase one of the uh, one point one spot. So then they get, then we asked them for a preference list. So that was the preference list they gave at the end of the month. Yeah. One more question. Why most of the company was handled by IPR board, not BCs? And during the day one itself, I am telling you, I couldn't find like in Roland Berger itself. Only placement coordinator were handling. I found IPR board only twice or once there. Okay, so why you were not distributing the work to the BCs also during that time? Because I heard BCs saying that we got only our company or IT company to handle. Not really. Like uh, there were BC, there were BCs handling non-core companies too. So initially, how it happens is IPR handles the non-core companies for the initial part, part, during the contacting part or facilitating for the test and all this part. part. But during uh, December or January, it will be BCs and IPR will be handling these companies uh, together. So I, I don't. Uh, so, uh, Additionally, it's not the BC job to be actually outside the company all the time. So, BC's role is to make sure that uh, the branch is getting placed. Which means he or she has to run around with the branch and make sure that their resumes are getting pushed. Similar thing with IPR. So, they also keep running around and make sure that that product is happening. So, uh, I think the point about the core person not being there near the company isn't a very valid one because the coordinators are there and that's their job to handle it. Uh, and I think IPR and BCs, they took the decision on their own. They had a consultation which is after which they decided the allocation of day one, day two, day But maybe better like the head will be, should be there if, like if there is some discussion to be happening, the like HR comes and asks for BC or IPR. Yeah, yeah, so when the HR comes and asks, if it's a, so most of the time it's like where is the student and something like that. So all these things can be handled by calls. Only if it's like a major issue, like if they have, if they are holding a candidate back, something of that, so that's when the core is called. And the core actually also not because uh, there are other non-core companies on campus as well who have been discussing with IPR before. So if those companies have issues, the IPR core has to sort them out. So essentially it's a relationship that's built over a semester. So the branch counselor has built up a relationship with the students over a semester, the IPR core has built up a relationship with the company over a semester. So it makes sense for them to use that, use that to the best advantage. So if a branch, uh, if a student in a branch is facing a particular issue with easy job, to run it out, figure out what's the, what's the issue and figure out how to solve it. And it's the IPR core's job to figure out what's happening with that company and make sure that it's resolved. Like because, like when I was an IPR core last year, 
and I wasn't handling Nomura. But if there was an issue with Nomura, I had to go handle it because I've been in touch with him for the last four months. So he logically that it happened that way. <coughs> uh, just pass me. Hello. So, uh, are you aware that uh, MTech and MSc is also your electorate? Yes. So, the placements for uh, MSc's have been very less and in your manifesto, I don't find any point related to that because and most of the focus has been on the people who are undergrads or dual degree students. So, why is it so like no like uh, Right now, I have spoken to the MSc students who are applied for placements. Uh, there are 40 students enrolled in each of the MSc specialization. And out of these 40, it's around uh, 4 students who are interested in placements in each department. So overall it was 15 students. And one of the major problems was, they never had a representation of them in the placement team. So when I asked for one of those 15 students to step up, there was always a hindrance, uh, like there wasn't a single per point of contact. So that was the major reason. So in order to avoid that, uh, we'll be having a point of contact in each of these specializations this year. No. So my point is, why isn't that an important point in your manifest? So it's most mostly an uh, team's issue rather than representation issue, rather than an issue on the placement team end. Okay. So that's why I didn't mention it. Another point is, uh, these MSc students, especially in maths, chemistry, physics, and uh, like MTech students who come off, they have a lot of problems related to communication skills. Okay, and uh, in general, like when we have all these programs, these people are sidelined. They are not invited, uh, part of these all the programs or the initiative which are done on the department level because uh, they are not a part of it as well. But they have a lot of problems related to that. Why I say so? They had these problems during their admissions also because the admission officer knows English and Tamil. And these guys know only Hindi. Okay. And they, although their communication language will be like English, but they are not that fluent into that. So they face problem in academics also in their initial year. So apart from placements, what is your take or the manifesto related to the uh, communication skills for these people and the English comprehensibility for these people? So I have spoken to a couple of uh, soft skill trainers. These trainers can be invited for placement preparation also because they want they want to concentrate on intensive batches of 40 to 50. So right now all the soft skills trainers that are coming for placements will handle around 400 to 500 students. So once they get the other trainers which are apart from placements, they will be taking care of uh, these interested students. Like at the end of the day, students should turn up for the session. So these sessions will be organized by these intensive uh, soft skill trainers rather than on a whole scale. And these sessions will start from their first year for MTEX and second years and third years for dual degrees and BTEX. My point is, like, uh, do you have any specific sessions in mind for these students in particular? Because these students, as you told, are not interested in placement. So hmm. they will be interested in doing higher study. Higher. So they, there must be a need to write SOP. And if hmm. they have been communication skills or English skills, they might need to write those things. How will they... One read? of the points which I mentioned uh, in the lecture series was by ter third party organizations. These are the organizations that are going to help the students in writing, like preparing their timeline or whatever approach they need to uh, guiding, giving them an approach to how to reach out a professor in uh, foreign universities. So they will be helping uh, in giving them funders on these points. So I think that uh, third party organization will be good enough to give this funding. Have you done any ground work? Yeah, I have met uh, two top third party organizations. One was Campus to Corporate and one was Career Council. And they have uh, showed me the timeline regarding uh, how their activities will be planned out throughout the semester. So it was pretty good. Okay. Another point is, uh, right now like MTech placement counsellors, like according to the new constitution, they will be like a very few bunch, like four or five people will be there as such. There are six actually. Uh, six people, but only five have applied. Sorry? Yeah, five, five people yeah. have applied. So posts are seven actually. Yeah, seven. Seven posts are there, five have applied. So how do you plan to distribute work among them because there is always a confusion uh, related to like which because they are not from every department. Hmm. So what is your plan of action for that? So I have spoken to the current MTech counselors. So one of the suggestions which they gave me was uh, we'll be having this department split up right in the start. And also we'll be uh, linking uh, related, de related departments. If you take uh, computer science and electrical, the companies will be of uh, slightly similar background. So we'll be having a single coordinator for coordinating both of these uh, departments. 
Similarly, we can club mechanical and metallurgical department. So that's how we are going to go ahead about this. And we also increase the number of FTEC counselors from 5 to 7 this year. So that will also increase the uh, representation. Thank you all the best. Thank you. Is that okay? There was a point in your uh, slide, on the first slide, that uh, you are planning to extend the phase 1 duration from 10 days to 15 days. Yes. So, can you please elaborate on that? So, right now we have 5 two-day slots. And more, I got a feedback from most of the students saying that these two-day slots are very intensive. So, firstly, we will re we'll be reducing this 5, uh, five two-day slots to 3 two-day slots. And then we will be having a gap between uh, multiple days. So that students can prepare for the next set of companies. So the other feedback which I get is, once a student doesn't get placed by day 4 or something, he doesn't have much idea about the companies which are coming in day, coming on day 5 and day 6. So if we have a gap between uh, day 4 and day 5, they can probably sit and uh, revise their uh, basic fundraise regarding how to approach an interview or also check about the companies that are coming on the next days. Uh, really spoke to the students who got placed on day 7 or day 8 because I know one guy and he was really hectic during placements when he didn't get placed till day 7 and uh, there is one more thing like uh, in one or two days you can't really prepare for the company uh, who is coming for placement right? You are basically this uh, gap will be to change the mindset of the student to take a student who is not placed in day 6 or day 7 there is lot of stress on the student like uh, a mental stress on the student so a day off would uh, help him in at least preparing for the HR interviews. These are the questions which he is aware of them and he is confident about them. But only because of the mental stress he isn't able to track them if we are having it at a stretch. So this gap would facilitate those students in preparing in those aspects. Um, so uh, I'm from, my point is similar to what uh, he said. I'm from the humanities department. So uh, basically, your manifesto covered everything, like uh, mostly technical related things. So you have a technical writing club, and you have uh, an ACAD wiki which deals with uh, dual degree and B tech um, things. So the, my question is, what you have in mind regarding uh, dealing with our needs, since it is really different from anything else, uh, all other branches in the institute. Also, um, uh, we, we don't have proper, like uh, the, all the information which we're getting is from our seniors regarding resume writing or internships or placements. Everything is something we approach our own department seniors for. We, we don't get much help from outside our department. So, you, I have, I found that you haven't covered that really well in your manifesto. manifesto. So, what do you say about that? So, uh, firstly, all the institute wide sessions, will be notified to all the departments, like across the departments. The placement core of the department will be forwarding the information regarding them. Now that we'll have an inbox tab in the portal itself, so all the students who are registered for placements will get uh, this information right at the first time, uh, not depending on the placement core of the department. And also, uh, the academically, I just gave dual degree curriculum as an example. So we can include all the doubts which uh, HS students are also having in this page. So student service page will include a uh, section for each department or where they can uh, upload the uh, common questions that are faced by the students in that particular department. Maybe regarding career opportunities or placements or any other uh, points which will be brought up by the branch counselor of the department. Okay, and one more thing is, uh, what is, do you, can you tell me about the current uh, placement opportunities available to us because it's not been very... So, this year uh, there were around three companies that were uh, that have been open to HS in particular. Uh, they were, uh, I'm not sure about the company names, but they, uh, Nirupama uh, was asking about few of the financial uh, firms, most of the banks and other consultants to get it open to HS. So, we have pitched about HS department to these uh, companies and couple of them responded positively. Isn't it your, I mean, isn't it important that you know the names of the companies coming particularly for us and if the fact that you don't even know the names of three companies just three out of so many that one of them was PwC one of them was PwC and initially we asked Nomura to open for uh, HS department but later they didn't come for the placements as such so uh, as an academic affairs secretary it's uh, I, it is not necessary that I'll be aware of each and every company that is coming for every department so that responsibility will be given to the placement 
uh, I'll be facilitating the placement core in uh, providing any platform for them to communicate to these companies or any new avenues they want to approach Facebook companies. Okay, and uh, regarding, I asked you about the whole resume writing thing and all that. You said you have a technical writing property, but you haven't focused about uh, focusing on our department as well. So, uh, Whatever I said right now was an example. So technical writing club, if there was a requirement, there is a requirement from the HS department especially. Like if they need any professionals uh, coming down to campus and giving them guidance, that feedback will be given to me from the uh, branch counselor of uh, HS department. So I have spoken to Dean Eckerts already regarding this point. So he said that he is ready to call up all the professionals, like any professional uh, related to any field. So that won't be a problem at all. Okay, and one more point about the workflow, it's been known to like come a lot uh, generally and people generally face a lot of problems with the workflow. So what, do you, uh, what are you planning to get rid of these problems? So uh, one of the major problems with workflow this year was there was a transition with the first year curriculum. So the workflow had to be different, different for the current first years and for the remaining batch. So that, that, that was the major problem for being workflow being off. So when I spoke to Dean Eckerts regarding this, he said that we are working on the workflow already. So all the uh, details which you go to academic section for uh, Dean's permission will be made through the workflow from the next year. So it will be more enhanced version of workflow from the next year. Hi, uh, you mentioned a peer mentoring system, right? Anishi, on the first slide. Sorry? You mentioned a peer mentoring system. Yeah. So how are you going to differentiate that with the Mitra Academy program? And so, uh, peer tutoring system to be precise. So, what it does is, uh, the second years and third years will be enrolled, like uh, whoever is interested will register for these tutoring systems. So, these tutoring systems will be guided, like uh, they will have the last year tutorials, last year quiz papers and all the stuff regard related to these courses. And the students would have done these courses recently. So, they will have a clear idea about uh, how the uh, academic service. No, no, I get that, but then isn't that redundant having two, th two teams so, working on the same thing? Uh, like, I have spoken to Mint regarding this also. So, currently they conduct for MA 101, PH 101, and a uh, couple of other courses like fluid mechanics and thermodynamics. So, but what they raised was the participation from the second years and third years was very less when uh, MIT has raised this point in the SMA, through SMA. So, they were asking the help of Academic Affairs Secretary to get it uniform across all departments. So, that's where I will be facilitating them with the appropriate set of students who can uh, help the juniors. How do you plan to increase participation in the second so, and third year? Right now, branch counselors will be aware of the students uh, about their department in a better manner rather than uh, the MIT. Because MIT isn't actively uh, like, uh, involved in the department. But whereas branch counselor specifically knows who are the set of students he can tap into. So that will be helpful in extending the domain. Is there any sort of incentive that you offer? Because so one of the major incentives is like uh, these tutors will be paid according to ICSR norms. So that, that is always there. Apart from that, uh, students teach, like most of the students are interested in teaching. We aren't tapping them into them exactly. Thank you. Hello, Saket. Uh, right now, faculties don't release, uh, don't show us and some papers and they don't release grade cutoffs. So, do you think that's a good idea? Because I think it will be useful for students. But it, we might have to push it. So, are you planning to push it through admin? So, uh, firstly, most of the professors uh, aren't willing to share their uh, end semester papers. But according to the institute rules, each professor uh, needs to store the uh, like end semester papers of last three years for any future evaluation. So, if you are very uh, stringent about any particular uh, grading pattern, you can always approach the professor. But one of the uh, reason why professors are against it is uh, most of the students randomly go to the professor and claim some, uh, unnecessary requests. So in order to avoid this, uh, I'm to, I have spoken to Dean Akats regarding this. Let's have a nomin uh, like, uh, nominal payment uh, in order to check your, prof check your answer script. Uh, so that only the serious students who are actually concerned about the grade or they are worried about that particular grade in the course will approach the professor. So, but uh, this, there needs to be more of uh, ideation on this point, that's why I didn't include it in my mind. So, great cutoffs? So, great cutoffs will be uploaded in the Moodle, as I said. Like, for each, uh, the average will be uploaded and the range of uh, A grade will be uploaded. 
There's a difference between average and grade A, grade B, grade C. So what specifically are you saying here? So uh, firstly, even professors don't want to reveal it completely because they do it from a case-to-case -case basis also. Suppose they see a student performing very well in their class, but uh, maybe he might have missed an S grade by say a couple of marks during the end semester. So you would like to give the student an S grade. So that was the major reason they are against it in uploading it at an open platform. This is regarding the career development point that you mentioned. Um, you said you will be bringing in third party organization for uh, higher studies Sunday sessions and all. This has already been happening and career development team of IITR is actively doing it. There are there are three sessions have already happened, one more is happening soon. So what is the fundamental of putting this point is? So uh, if you take uh, the career development opportunities which IR is focusing, it was majorly uh, related to MS and uh, MBA as of the three sessions which have been conducted. And these sessions, one of the sessions is conducted in the event semester. So the sessions which I which I am focusing will be mainly in the odd semester and we'll be having uh, interaction like regarding the detailed timeline. So detailed timeline and preparation material wasn't uh, shared with the students in these sessions based on the feedback which I got. So these third parties were uh, prepared with the material and they have experience in it now. Regarding academic body program, so currently I am handling academic body program for Metro and we are uh, only doing for first year because of the survey first year. How, how are you planning to uh, make it for second years and third years? Because number of students in particular subject will be very less in order to organize any tutor for that. And again the payments will be a very uh, because if, if you go by ICSR room, we have we are, we are going to pay 200 uh, rupees per hour. So how are you planning to uh, go about that? So academic body program, uh, firstly I will be focusing on the current first years. After that moving on to second years, uh, we have spoken, I have spoken to branch counselors like the aspiring branch counselors of the department and they have taken a feedback from the students. So one of the reasons uh, uh, students don't apply to this academic body program is uh, students have a wrong notion saying that they need to help the students in the academic part of it, like in actually uh, explaining the course and stuff. So academic party program is just like uh, mentoring and giving them five suggestions. Suppose I should. Sorry to uh, disturb you, colleague. Uh, but uh, right now, academic body program is actually about you. It's actually about teaching, not about the mentoring program. So yeah. if you are paying them two hundred rupees per hour for teaching them, not about mentoring and guiding them. So academic body and peer tutoring systems are completely different. So academic body will not be paid. Peer tutoring will be paid because peer tutoring is something where you are contributing to the other student. So academic body is more like suggestions. It's like uh, it's rather than a senior who is giving funders regarding various courses, it will be your academic body who is giving you funders. So they don't have